What's going on people? My name is Tayo and today I thought I'd share with you my long-term review of the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. After all the hype has gone down and about six months of use, the idea is to give you feedback after having used it now for much, much longer. Now you may be wondering why the 16 inch and not the 14? And I'll talk about this shortly along with my experience using this device. Let's start with the design build of this thing because this is big for the direction of future MacBooks. And I feel like this is perhaps the part where a lot of people asked me questions the most in considering going with the 16 inch or the 14 inch. By the way, I got a lot of people in the comments of my initial review arguing with me on the specs of my laptop, <laughs> my laptop. So here are my specs, just to put that to rest. Apple seems to have moved away from that slim, minimal look on previous models. Once again, the new MacBook Pro, especially the 16 inch, is quite bulkier, but it's not at all in a bad way. Comparing it to my older 15 inch MacBook, it's got a slightly similar footprint in terms of mass, although it's longer around the back and heavier for sure, which is understandable. But even at that, it's a very small trade-off in my opinion for the battery life, screen real estate, and insane performance that you get. And if you're someone that has a relatively small body frame or you travel a lot, then I'd probably recommend the 14 inch model as you can also customize that to your needs. Now, because this is the standard for me due to my old MacBook, I might not be as excited for this compared to everyone else, but this new design also brings back the ports they took away in the first place. Good job, Apple, smart. Now, let's take a closer look at all of them, beginning with the left side. Here, there are two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports to charge the MacBook and to connect peripherals. Also, the MagSafe charger, which is more sturdier than the old one on my MacBook. And I like what they've done with this new connection cable. The chances of this breaking are less likely to happen compared to the old one. For the 16 inch, you get a 140 watt fast charging brick, which is not as heavy as I was expecting it to be. I also got an extension cable with a universal plug just for more reach when I'm out and about so that the brick doesn't fall off from the power outlet. I really hate when that happens. Finally, there's that three and a half headphone jack so you can plug in your headphones. It isn't necessarily optimized for high impedance headphones, but it works great for the everyday user. On the right side, there's the HDMI port, another USB-C connection, and the SD card slot. This is also something that got a lot of people excited as well. What I first struggled with was the lack of a USB 2.0. I don't know why this wasn't included at all, but I tried a couple of dongles, which weren't the best, and the MacBook's performance was really, really impacted. It was affected, it became bad, and it was a nightmare. But after all this time with this laptop, I've since changed my workflow to a USB Type-C, and it's been solid. Another big update to this MacBook is the keyboard. Now, I didn't get to use the touch bar MacBooks, so I cannot necessarily say whether I'm excited or not by the lack of it. This new keyboard has a very nice feel to it when you're typing. Although with frequent use, you'll start to see some dirt, smudge, and fingerprints all over it, not just the keyboard, the body as well, and the trackpad. Speaking of the trackpad, it still has that really nice, spacious outlay, which is one of the best in the game, if you ask me. The speakers on this thing are absolutely incredible. Six speaker sound system with noise canceling woofers, wide stereo sound, spatial audio, and all that other good stuff. This thing is the second best thing about this MacBook for me. Sometimes I even edit my videos now without having to put on headphones because they're just so good at sound representation that I'm just like, I can get on with this. Another major hardware upgrade is in the display. Let me just say that I don't think there's any other display on a laptop currently on the market at this price point that comes close to this. This is simply stunning. The notch, 
forget about it. It's not even a problem because with time, you won't even think about it anymore. In that notch, however, there is a housing for a 1080p FaceTime camera. With this new MacBook, in terms of the screen tech, Apple updated that to ProMotion, which maxes at 120 Hertz. And I'm not sure that many applications are currently optimized to take advantage of this. Even some of Apple's software like Safari, but hopefully that will change in the near future with software updates. The XDR display on this thing is beautiful on the eye with a peak brightness of up to 1600 nits. When I compare it to my older MacBook Pro that only goes up to about 500 nits, this function though is limited to HDR content. Now, when it comes to the performance on this thing, Apple went over and beyond what they needed to do because when they announced the M1 Pro and Max chip, I wasn't expecting this, but this was designed for power and most importantly, efficiency. And unlike the traditional ones, the M1 chip architecture is based on being able to better manage resources in a way that the CPU and GPU work off the same unified memory. The model that I have has the 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, and one terabyte of internal SSD. I believe this is a sweet spot for me in terms of price, performance, and balance. However, if I could go back in time, I would have gotten that two terabyte storage instead. It's just, I generally edit on a 4K timeline, sometimes multiple streams, and this has worked seamlessly very well, particularly with Final Cut Pro and Pixelmator Pro. Chopping up, chopping up a 4K timeline is much faster compared to my old machine. It's, it's not even close. I also use some additional plugins from Motion VFX, Crumple Pop, and others. Rendering my timeline gets done in a few seconds. This was a nightmare on my old MacBook. In terms of fan noise, my old MacBook was always a lift up, but I think I've only had this fan come on once since, and that was because the battery was at 3% or so. I didn't plug it in and was bringing in about 5,000 JPEGs into one Final Cut Pro timeline. But besides that, this thing's been great. For me, it's what it does to save me time, like the fast rendering how it comes on instantly, battery, and other things. It just makes such a big difference that I'd say this was by far the best purchase of last year for me. The battery life on this MacBook Pro and the optimization with the M1 Max really keeps it going. Now, one of the differences that M1 Pro users mention in terms of battery life is that the Pro draws less power when idle or working due to less cores but I find that not compelling enough in support of the Pro over the Max. And in my use case, on a single charge, I was able to edit a 10 minute 4K video halfway on a five hour trip and still had almost 60% battery power left. I eventually shut it down because I was tired. Now, outside of video editing, I get about 10 to 13 hours with continuous use for web browsing and watching content. Having a really good laptop is crucial because I do a lot of academic and creative work. I'm, I'm getting a PhD, people. I, I read a lot. I'm, I'm always on my computer. After using my 2015 MacBook for a number of years, I realized it was time to upgrade, especially on the video side of things as it could barely keep up anymore. But I wanted something that would still be relevant for at least another four to five years. So I was really excited to get the 16 inch MacBook Pro powered by the M1 Max chip. And as a long time user now, having used this for almost 6,000 hours, I'd say this new MacBook has almost all the features that we've been asking Apple to do. It's now a real professional device and probably the best on the market. Now, the price tag in this thing is not cheap. This laptop is a premium over a lot of the other options out there, but if you're someone who's very focused on being productive and efficient and you need a professional laptop, then really this MacBook does deliver and even goes above and beyond what it promises to do. The real difference here between the Pro and the Max would be a slight trade-off for performance against battery life, where the Max gets a performance boost 
the Pro gets a battery savings boost. I still don't think it's good enough. The Pro is also slightly cheaper, so that might be something to consider, but you cannot go wrong with any of these new MacBooks. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and if you've enjoyed this video, that's great. If you'd like to know more about how I've been using this laptop, you can watch the next video right after this one. Welcome to our cooking show. <laughs> <laughs> Rendering my timeline gets done. We good? We good boy? We good boy? I probably, I probably wouldn't do like any other MacBook reviews because I feel like there's just so much now, you know? There's so much reviews on the internet. So this is probably my final review of the MacBook. Right.